Recently, I volunteered my time at a convention for dying game developers, also known as X. I asked the question, you're on your deathbed. A nerd comes to your side and says, I want to learn how to make games. What is the most essential mechanic every game dev should know? My immediate answer would be something like, leave me alone kid and let me die in peace. But it's actually an interesting question because game development is not like most careers. It has billions of possible paths with many conflicting opinions and no single right way to do things. Despite its unpredictable nature, there are some universal movement mechanics that nearly every game developer needs to master. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at five of them. First up, we have point and click movement. What we want to do here is have the player click a spot and the character moves there like a well-trained golden retriever. Pretty simple concept to implement until you want to avoid obstacles and prevent the character from walking all over you, not unlike your favorite OnlyFans model. To fix this, what you can do is go to college, get a computer science degree to learn about pathfinding algorithms, realize that you wasted 4 years doing psychedelics and start copying code from the internet. But what you can also do is copy this code from the internet which will add pathfinding functionality to your player. Then in Unity you can add a nav mesh surface game object to the scene, add a nav mesh modifier component to all objects and set them as walkable and all the obstacles as non-walkable and hit bake. Finally, you can add the nav mesh agent component to the player, tweak the settings such as speed and obstacle avoidance values. In our code, we want a reference to this nav mesh agent and in awake set its rotation and up axis movement to false to prevent gravity and set the destination to the target position and update movement. Hit play and the player will automatically find the shortest path to the click position. Now I know what most of you are thinking. The player doesn't always stick to the center of a tile. That brings us to the second item on our list, grid-based movement. This is perfect for tactical strategy games or when you want to move tile by tile like chess pieces. In our current setup, we can easily implement this by getting the center of the tile we are moving at and updating the destination to the center point. In our code, store references to the tile map your player is moving on and the grid. Then we can get the position of the tile using the world to sell method, check if this location actually has a tile using the has tile method. If it does, then calculate the path the agent has to travel on, get the last tile on this path, then using the center of this tile update the destination of the agent. We can then call this method only when there is a click instead of calling it an update to improve performance. The player will now move only from the center of a tile to another. The question at this point becomes, what if you want the player to move using your keyboard? So first we have to check if the player is already moving, which we do by comparing the current and target position, or if the user hasn't given any input and bail out early. In any other case, we want to update the player's position to a new target, this can be done by updating the current position to the input direction times the tile size, which will give us the next tile to move towards. From there, we can get the location of this tile using the world to sell method. Then if a tile doesn't exist at this location, we can bail out again. But if it does, then we get its center point and update the target. Finally, in update, we can update the position to the target position using vector3.move towards. To prevent our player from walking over obstacles, add a tile map collider component to the tile map and now you can use use your sticky keyboard to restrict your player along a grid. But if you are a fan of classic games like Zelda or Final Fantasy, you might not appreciate the restricted movement. Which brings us to top-down movement. This time, our changes are very little in that we only have to add a rigid body component to our player and in our code set the update movement function to set the rigid body velocity to our input direction times the move speed and then call this function from fixed update instead of update because we are doing physics calculations. But if you are more into Mario, then the next item on our list is more suitable for you. Platformer movement. Platformers like Celeste, Super Meat Boy and Hollow Knight employ a lot of invisible tricks to keep the player engaged and make the movement feel as smooth as possible. Today we're gonna be doing none of that and build a simple controller as fast as possible. So first we need references for the animator and rigid body, a float to control our move speed, then one for the jump force, the distance from the ground to the player's center and the ground layer. This is something you'll have to play around with to figure out the right value depending on your sprite size or model size. Then I'm going to create properties for the move and jump inputs to control the animation and direction and a bool to check if the player is grounded or not. In awake, freeze the rotation of the rigid body and in update, to check if the player is grounded, we'll fire a ray using physics.raycast from the player's position towards the ground till the ground distance and check for anything in the ground layer. If this check returns true, then we are grounded, then we can call methods to update the direction and animation of the player. In fixed update, we want to update the jump and movement logic. In update direction, we just want to update the local scale of the player to rotate left or right and in update animator, we check if you are grounded 
and update the animation to either the idle or walk and if you are not grounded then we set it to idle or any jump animation you might have. From there in update movement we get the horizontal velocity of the player using the x component of the input property times the move speed and set this to the rigid body velocity keeping the y velocity the same. This makes sure that we don't override the jump velocity when we update the jump and update jump. Here we can check if the player is grounded and if the jump button is pressed. If it is then we set the jump velocity to jump force and then update the rigid body velocity this time keeping the horizontal velocity unchanged. In unity create a new ground layer and set this in the player controller. Hit play and you'll have a basic platformer controller. To make this better we can add things like variable jump height, apex modifiers, jump buffer and more. If you've been enjoying the video so far hit like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you want to see an in-depth or advanced version of any of these movements. But now it's time for the last item on our list, top down shooting movement. This style has recently gotten popular due to games like Vampire Survivor. It's similar to top down movement with the added complexity of the player rotating towards the mouse at all times. What we can do in our top down movement code is create a property for the rotation offset which depends on the sprite you're using. For my sprite I know that it's negative 90 degrees. From there we can make a few tweaks to the update direction function. So first we'll get the world position of the mouse using screen to world point method of the main camera. We get the direction to rotate towards. Then using the mathf.arctangent function we can get the angle towards this direction and convert it to degrees. To create a rotation for this angle, use the quaternion.angle axis method which takes the angle plus the offset to rotate towards and the axis to rotate about. Then we can set this rotation in transform.rotation. Congratulations, you have mastered all the essential movement mechanics you need to build virtually any game. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments which one's your favorite and thanks for watching.